Let's see how to tile images in Unity UI. First, we need to add a canvas game object. So let's click on the plus icon and under the UI category, we can see it over here, canvas. Now, before adding the images via the code, let's try to do it manually to better understand how it works. So as a child to this canvas, let's add an image. So again, under the UI category, I'm going to add image. And you can see the components that the image game object came with. So we have rect transform, and then we have canvas renderer, and then we have an image. Now first, to set the image, and that's what's actually displayed as the image, we can set the source image, which is actually a sprite. So I already have here my resources folder, and inside this folder, I have this image. So again, let's choose the image from the hierarchy, and let's drag the image as our sprite. And indeed, we now see our image displayed on the UI. Now, since we want to tile our images, we would better start from the top left corner, instead of from the middle of the screen. So notice what we have now for anchors. We have 0.5 here and here, and also here and here, where it says min and also where it says max. So what I'm going to do is change the anchor. So let's click here, and instead of placing the image relative to the middle of the screen, I'm going to place it relative to the top left corner. And now, if we take a look at what we have for anchors, we can see that we have 0, 1, and again 0, 1, both for min and max. And we'll have to do the same thing in our script. Now, the image didn't move yet, but it is now placed relatively to the top left corner. If we want to actually move it to the top left corner, let's try to change its position to 0, 0, and let's see what happens. And we can see that now we only see a quarter of the image. And that's because its center is placed in the top left corner. Now we can see that its width and height are 100 and 100. So what we need to do is place it in 50 and minus 50. And now we see the entire image and it's placed in the top left corner. Let's now try to achieve the same thing from the code. So let's delete the image we added manually. And let's get back to the assets folder. And here I create my scripts folder. And inside the scripts folder, I'll create the tile images script. And now I'll attach this script to the canvas game object. And if we take a look again at the canvas, you can see that it now has the tile images script attached to it. Let's now start editing our script. And to do that, I'll click on assets and open C Sharp project. Let's start by creating a new game object, and this is going to be the image game object. Next, I want to set its parent to the canvas. Now, since our script is attached to the canvas game object, we can refer to the canvas with the this keyword. So let's set the parent of the new game object to this. Now, you might remember that when we did the things manually, one of the components in our game object was the image component. So let's add such a component to our new game object. And the type of the new component has to be image, of course. And by the way, instead of specifying the Unity Engine.UI namespace over here, we can simply add a using for this namespace, like so. And then we can access the classes in this namespace directly. And if we hover over image, we can see that it's actually referring to unityengine.ui.image. Let's run our game now and see what we get. And here is our new game object. And that's the game object we created from the code. And I want you to notice two things. First, here is the image component. And now we will be able to set the source image. Another thing I want you to notice too is that we also have the rect transform component. This one was added automatically when we added the image component. And it means that we can get this component and edit its properties. So let's stop the game and get back to the code. And first, let's set the sprite for the image component. And I'm going to load my image as a resource. Now, we want to use this resource as a sprite. So let's load it as sprite. And now we need to specify the path to the image. If we get back to Unity, we can see that under Assets, I have the Resources folder. This name is not arbitrary. 
If you want to access an image with its path, it has to be located in a folder called resources, spelled exactly like this. Now inside my resources folder, I have my image. So I'm simply going to copy the name from here and paste it as my path. Next, let's get the rect transform component from our new game object. And as you might remember, we had to change the min anchor and the max anchor to 0, 1. So let's do that. And another thing we had to do is set the anchored position to 50 minus 50. Let's try to run our game now and see what we get. And here is our image placed at the top left corner. All that's left is place it a few more times in different locations. Now, if we take a look at our canvas itself, we can see that it also has a rect transform component. And this component holds the size of the canvas. We're going to use this size to know how many images we can fit in. So let's stop our game. And now let's get the rect transform component of the canvas. And from it, let's extract the width and the height of the canvas. And the size can be found in the rect field. And we got a type mismatch, so let's change the type of the variable to float. And let's do the same thing for the height of the canvas. And now, instead of creating only one image game object, let's use a nested loop to place as many of them as we can fit in. And as you might remember, the size of the image was 100 by 100. So that's how much we need to increase the value of x for different columns. Now one difference for the height is that we need to decrease the value by 100 between rows. And let's fix the indentation. And of course, we now want to set the positions of our images according to the current values of x and y. So let's save our script and see what we get now. So it's almost correct, we only need one small fix, and that's to start the values of x and y from the location of the first image, which should be 50 and minus 50. And if we run our game now, we get the same image tiled over and over on our UI. 